Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm looking at the 2022 range of kits being offered by FX. Some of these are hangovers from last year, but there are some welcome surprises along with some disappointments. Let's get straight to it, a new tool aircraft, starting with the impressive 124th scale. Well, it was announced the day before the official launch day, but here it is, the new Supermarine Spitfire Mark 9C. The Spitfire Mark 9 was a response to the superiority of the German Focke-Wulf 190 over the Spitfire 5C that formed the bulk of the Spitfire force, felt most acutely by early 1942. The use of a two-stage supercharged Merlin 61 gave the Mark 9 a dramatic performance hike, especially at high altitude, and the Focke-Wulf 190 started to lose its edge. Here, Camera gun footage shows the effect of the Mark 9's combined 20mm cannon and .303 machine guns. As you would expect from 124th scale these days, the kit appears very highly detailed. It looks like you might just want to get two of these, one with all the panels open, showing the detail of the engine, the cockpit and the amazing structure in the wings, and another to show off the clean exterior lines of the Spitfire. The kit has 433 parts in total and is available in four colour schemes. One is for 126 Squadron REF, one for 402 Squadron Royal Canadian Air Force, one for the 309th Fighter Squadron of the US Army Air Force and a rather natty looking one for French Squadron GR233. Now this beast of a kit comes with a beast of a price, a shade under £95 but I guess that's £25 cheaper than the Hellcat was. This Spitfire is expected in the summer. On to the increasingly popular 148th scale. First of the new tools is one a lot of people, including me, had hoped for, the Blackburn Buccaneer. The 172 scale kit is superb. I've built four of them, and this looks even better. Taking advantage of the larger scale, the kit comes with all kinds of accessories such as ladders and FOD covers for the engines. You can even have one of the Spey Turbo fans exposed if you like. Plenty of cockpit detail and a range of weapons including rocket packs, bombs and Martel missiles. Sadly, it doesn't appear that the nose radome can be moved. This was essential to getting the buck struck down below on the tiny lifts of some of our old carriers. 288 parts in the kit and four sets of markings for the all over extra dark sea grey finish. However none of these is for 800 naval air squadrons so I'll probably have to look for some aftermarket decals for my ones. £72.49 is a price tag and they are expected to arrive in the summer. Another very much hoped for kit and well overdue is this new Avro Anson. The Anson's a bit of an unsung hero, but it was the first monoplane to enter RAF squadron service and the first RAF aircraft with retractable undercarriage. The superb looking tooling comes to 175 parts and there are three colour schemes. Now the Anson plugged a major hole in our reconnaissance and maritime patrol forces in the first years of the war and many a great bomber pilot took their first multi-engine steps in the Anson as a trainer. Listed at 46 99 the Anson is expected in the autumn. On to 172nd scale, and the first kit here has been known about for a little while, the Hawker Tempest 5. This is a good looking kit of a truly excellent aircraft. One of the colour options is for B. Beaumont's aircraft from 150 wing. I met B a few times and he loved the Tempest, and it was the master of the low level skies. One interesting thing in this kit is the one-piece compass and gun sight moulded in clear plastic. There are 68 parts in total in the kit with two schemes offered at the usual 11 99 and this kit is expected in the spring. Next up is a new Gloucester Meteor F8. The 148th scale kit was very well received and the F8 needed to appear in this scale. Now I've made the special hobby F8 recently and it was okay but not that great. The new Airfix one appears to be well detailed. There are 111 parts, Lord knows how, for such a simple aircraft and it has three scheme options. Cost will be £23.99 when it arrives in the summer. 
We also have a new supply of re-released kits to look at, starting with the 148 scale. First off is a brace of Spitfires. The Mark 12 is a reboxing with new decals of a 2011 tooling, and the Spitfire 18 is the 2019 tooling of the FR Mark 14 with a few new parts and different decals. Then there is another P51D Mustang, a reissue of the 2012 kit with new colours. Next on the list is an F86F Sabre. Now, this is a kind of a reboot of the 2021 Canadair Sabre F4 with a few new parts and colours for Norwegian and Japanese aircraft. Now, I never made the Canadair Sabre, so I'll have to have a go at this one. All of these kits I've just mentioned are scheduled for the spring. The props come in at $28.99 and the Sabre at $39.99. And finally in this section we have the reissue of the 2012 Lynx helicopter coming out in the summer at $49.99. One seventy-second scale has its share of re-releases too. Early in the new year we can expect the Bolton Paul Defiant the Sea Harrier FRS Mark I and the Swordfish Mark I. All of these have new decals. Likewise the Grumman F4F Wildcut and the Blenheim 4F, both of which should be with us in the spring. In the summer we can expect a Spitfire Mark 22, an F51D Mustang, the Harrier GR 7A or 9 and the Dornier DO17Z. The Mustang is a lovely kit if you haven't yet made one. The GR7 Harrier, maybe not so much. Then in the autumn, as the evenings draw in, we can look forward to the Lightning F Mark II and the Heinkel HE111P2, both of which have new decals. There's also the C47 and the Victor. These appear to be pretty much as they were released before. I had hoped that the Victor would come as a conventional bomber as well, but both schemes available seem to be carrying the Blue Steel missile. And finally, for the aircraft, we have the Vintage Classics. In spring, we can expect the Fiat G50 and the very pretty Beagle 206. In the autumn, we're expecting the F-80 Shooting Star, the Commonwealth Boomerang, the De Havilland Canada Beaver and the Westland Whirlwind. That's the first helicopter I ever rode in, so I'll have to get one of those. Before we leave, the surprise, I guess, from the vaults is the reissue of the 124th scale Hawker Sidley Harrier GR1. What is perhaps even more surprising is that it costs the same as the brand new 124th Spitfire. Personally, I'll probably give this one a miss. On to some vehicles now, and there are four new tools in 135th scale to look forward to. In the spring, we anticipate seeing the Sturmpanzer Fort Bumbert assault vehicle with just the 546 parts. Now, they can't all be tracks, can they? $45.99 seems quite the bargain. Then we are told to expect the K2Y ambulance in the spring as well, but as all efforts can say at the moment is that it will cost $33.99, I don't see it arriving on time. Keeping up with the German armour is a Sturmgeschütz 4, all 588 parts due in the summer, and in the autumn the Model J Panzer 3 should be hitting the shelves, topping the lot with 599 parts. Each of these large armoured vehicles are 45.99. There are also three vintage classics of armour on the horizon and all due for release soon. There is the British Churchill Mark IV, the Japanese Type 97 and the awesome Russian JS-3. Each of these is £6.99. Next are the military figures and there are just two sets being re-released, one of Russian infantry and one of Japanese infantry, presumably to go along with the tank releases. Finally, warships in 1 600th scale. Airfix are reissuing two ships that have some relevance to the 1982 Falklands conflict. First is HMS Fearless, which, with its sister HMS Intrepid, provided amphibious landing capability to the task force. If I remember correctly, you get some landing craft with it as well. 
Then there is HMS Devonshire representing the county class of guided missile destroyer. Two of this class, HMS Antrim and HMS Glamorgan, served in the Falklands War. Each of these kits comes in at 1599. So there we have the 2022 range from Airfix. I've already put in my orders for the 124th Spitfire, the Buccaneer Anson and Sabre in 148th, and the 172nd Tempest 5 and Meteor F8. So you'll see all of these on my channel as they're built later in the year. So that's all for now. Do remember if you've enjoyed this to subscribe to the channel to see builds as they're finished, other news and views and other projects as I complete them. Thanks very much for listening and I will see you next time. <laughs>